I absolutely loved that with her sleeping till the next day and she woke up and she rolled over and no, no one was there and she looks over and Luke was sleeping on the couch. Yeah. Like, that was so cute. And that tiny couch and that big man. It <laughs> was mm-hmm. really cute. Oh, I really and liked that couch, by the way. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous little settee. No, I loved that, too, because it was just... First off, the couch was was gorgeous. But, like, him just curled up on that couch. And, like, it was... a Like, one might might construe that it was a little bizarre that he was watching her sleep. But it was also, like... I loved it, though, because it was just, he was over there. He understood that she deserved her space. She deserved to have her space. And having that sort of, like, respect over her boundaries and not overstepping his bounds. Because, like, yes, they are they are married, but it's been seven years since they've shared a bed, and he doesn't know the trauma that she's had. So give her the space to sleep in the bed. Don't try to snuggle up next to her. Was just so gentlemanly and so respectful of the journey that she's going to uh, need to go through, which also says to me that he has spent a good amount of time understanding and processing what, um, what other refugees have gone through. Yeah. He's probably, he probably knows a lot from, uh, hanging out with Moira and Emily. Um, you know, we, I remember that was a thing specifically with Emily and Syl of, still knowing to you know just respect boundaries and wait for her to say hey this is an okay thing to do like you know that kind of thing and tbd i mean i think he had to learn a lot from her he saw a lot of that firsthand Mm -hmm. of of her growth so i'm sure he understands what that recovery looked like at least from that aspect of it um i didn't think that it was weird that he was watching her um I guess I I, the way you said it I guess I could see how someone could say that but um but I thought it I mean it's totally makes sense like he's not in bed with her because again that would be a boundary that's just not they're not ready to cross that yet um but I think that from Luke's perspective like a he's just waiting around for her to wake up but what else is he gonna do and b she's here like just just laying on that couch and listening to her breathe must just be the most incredible feeling so watching her just sleep i think is probably everything he's been waiting for for seven years yeah it must have been absolutely beatific for him that's a cool word (laughs) every once in a while i pull out words other than like (laughs) Caddy Wampus and like <laughs> some of my catchphrases. Um, no, I really, I really, really do love that. And like, and that, and Luke says as much of that as well. Like when he looks at her and says, I can't believe you're here. And he, and he stays on the couch as well until June says, Do you want to come sit? And then he's like, super enthusiastic he's like yes i do i do i want to i want to i want to sit close to you but like yes i'll do it yeah and and yes and he sits next to her but he doesn't like sit immediately next to her like he still respects that space and that distance to allow her the opportunity to reach out to him and like god good guy luke if ever love him i do love this guy I truly, truly love Luke um, for respecting her boundaries and also being just so doting on this woman and understanding, like, that he can't understand what she's going through, but he can at least empathize with it and try to do everything that he can to support her through it. All I can think back to is, like, in general, like, it's just always what we've seen from their relationship. Like, I think that's why last episode threw us through such a loop to see June questioning their relationship in any way, because we've always seen the memories where it's very evident that they've always been a great team and they always, you know, work out their stuff. And it's just, I was trying to think of a very specific memory in which, like, he just shows that this is who he's always been and how he always operates. And I think it's the one... um he gets Hannah baptized. Isn't doesn't he say like, well, this is what she wants, and he really just kind of champions her because it's what she wants. And I think that is Luke's nature is to just always. I don't think he's ever shown us anything other than respecting June and her wishes and her boundaries. And this is very much a tenuous 
reunion. Like, there's just so much unknown. And I think, like, it would almost be super weird if he did get in the bed with her. Because, like, I just feel like that would be such a weird thing for anyone to do. Like, yes, I, oh, I yeah. agree. Luke's, like, great with her. But also, like, why would anyone not, like, like stay on the couch? Like, it's just such a strange thing. Like, I mean, she barely looked at him when she took the shower. <laughs> and that's the last interaction they've had. Like, getting in the bed with her would be creepy and unwanted in so many ways. Like, I feel like... It, June's much to June. Luke is so much past, like, being able to pick up on that. Like, I feel like he's just, he knows how to support June. If it's, and I think that's what she was seeing when she saw all that moving of the plates was like, okay, he's still got it. He knows that he's going to take care of me, like you were saying. No, and I'm with you on that. Like, if if anyone were to cr- I crawl into that bed with her, it would have been, it would have been out of place at best <laughs> and unwelcomed at best. Um uh, Yes, ex- exactly. Um, so, like, it's just, like, for me, it's sort of doubled down on Luke being, like, the best potential partner, like, that June could hope for in this moment and the best potential, like, champion of what she needs. Because he understood it at that moment. And, like, yeah, of course it would have been extremely weird. But think about it this way. If you were separated from your partner for seven years and finally had the chance to see them again, like, I don't know if I would have, like, the wherewithal to sleep on like a settee so so far away from them just to watch them like I would probably like I I I wouldn't think to like not sleep but I would know not to sleep in like the same bed as them but I'd probably be like I just want to like sleep with an arm's distance of you let me like sleep on the floor in the bed next to you please like like <laughs> you know like it sounds so pathetic. Like, it does. She wakes up to two fingers on the bed, and you hate the fingers, wow. damn it. I hate the fingers. I do hate the fingers. That's true. Oh, here's some Patreon content here for you. I know. It's oh, been so fingers. long since we've derailed Jesus. I haven't had any Patreon bloopers to cut. Here you go. Thanks. No, but, like, I totally fucking get that, because, like, I don't know, man. Like, that just seems like the two of them have such a pure, intense connection. And, like, he's waited for her for seven fucking years. And, like, yeah, so they're strangers. Like- they are. And in this they're, they're moment, like, like getting in the course. bed with him, I feel like that'd no. be like getting in the mm-hmm. bed with your table. Like, you might know him a little <laughs> bit. You, 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 you know I them. Mean, you have a rapport of some sort. There's a history there, but it's not yeah. a history in which you get in the same bed while they're sleeping for the no, first time in seven years. Like, just poor of woman course. hasn't even had a bed, and this dude's going to get in it. Like, I don't care if it's Luke. It's weird. I agree. That's why I'm just saying, like, I would never, like, condone that, and I would never crawl into the same, like, the same bed. I'm like give you your space but like i just want to be there like if you want to hold my hand it's it's close by i i'm here yeah you're right right here what it is is that it takes a lot of restraint for luke i imagine i i appreciate the restraint it took because yes i agree that there's somewhere for him it's probably less awkward and he might still want to get in that bed to me i still think i would be like you know, at least wait no, till she's awake before you yeah, cross that bridge. Yeah, like, don't get, don't get in the bed. He did, he did oh, the right man. thing. 100%. That would not be well received. No. no, of course it wouldn't have been. Like, <laughs> oh god, he starts stroking and his spoons are like Serena. <laughs> god, no, oh no. Oh, it triggers a Serena no. flashback, and we're right back into all of June's oh, trauma man, that's flashbacks. So, that's a that. thing that could potentially happen. <laughs> it would have. It definitely oh, would have happened. Like the, if the water bottles. Are are going to cause a flashback then of course that would have caused a flashback yeah oh like, my god of course it was all of the restraint like when like she wakes up and like she sees him and he's just like staring at her on the couch like l- so cherubic like ugh, all of the restraint on his end of things like I, I, you gotta give the man all of the credit in the world for that because like this is clearly the the love of his life and to have to maintain that composure and not like and not be close to her and give her all of the space that she needs as she needs it. Like, good guy Luke all fucking day. Like, I'm just, I'm going to double down on my, uh, on my team Luke love right here. <laughs> I'm going to laugh at you and say any idiot would know not to get in bed with her. But yay, Luke, I guess. <laughs> I, one would think any just idiot would know you. that. I'm but just like, teasing you. I just think that there's plenty, there's plenty of room in this episode to give Luke all the deserved credit. And I just feel like him not getting into bed is pretty baseline. Like, every person should know that, basically. Every person should know that. But 
controlling one's own predilections to be close to the person that you've devoted yourself to for your entire life must be extremely difficult. And it must very must be a lesson in patience and like a lesson in that sort of per- like the, a lesson in that sort of like self restraint. And it's growth in Luke because just in general, I know you had said it in the past, Scarlet, of like it was so hard in season three to watch Luke have these opportunities where he should have had a more satisfying meeting with Fred and he just couldn't quite get off the ground in the way that he wanted to. And the reunion with Serena, like understandably reunion, but the meeting with Serena um, understandably was like fraught with all sorts of different emotions. But at the same time, it was like, God, Luke, be smarter. Like I always remember that was, I was so frustrated with him for not being smarter, given the fact that June is still in Gilead and he's like, slapping Serena in the face as much as I understand that he wanted to it's like you know, she controls your wife's safety so like maybe not that right now just take the stupid pocket watch and say you'll give it to the kid and chuck it in the garbage and move on like that was so <laughs> like so deep out too. <laughs> like, but understandably like he's always you know he wants these are terrible people that he has this moment with and it just didn't come out it didn't he didn't get what he needed out of these meetings and so in that sense, to watch him here where what he wants is probably to get in bed with his wife and hug her and tell her, you know, how sorry he is and have all the conversations. And what he has to do is restrain himself and lay in the bed and just think, my God, for 17 hours, I can't believe she's here. I can't wait to talk to her when she wakes up, maybe sometime. <laughs> so I feel like what they're trying to show us here really is the experience of literally millions of people across the world that end up disaffected from their homes. It's never as simple as like, yeah, you step off the boat and you run into each other's arms. It's just not like that. There's, There are people who have dealt with trauma everywhere, whether it's from like sex trafficking or, you know, uh, disasters or war. You come out of that changed in a certain way and you just don't jump right back into where you left off it's not possible there's a rebuilding process yeah absolutely and they and they touch on that as well later in the episode um when emily is talking about her relationship with sill um so that's a really really solid point scarlet is that every single one of these are these women are have and luke to a point uh, luke has also gone through as well but not to the extent as the uh, as these women is it's an indicator of what people have gone through, what people have gone through and refugees have gone through around the world. Um, so I love that you're bringing it back to that. That's what I'm here for. Amazing. That's why we keep um, me around. 